This is Greg Locke. He's a hate preacher, megachurch pastor, and perpetual victim. In his head, anyway. According to Greg, he's being sued by his neighbor in an attempt to force him to move his church to an area that's zoned for business. This is part three. If you haven't seen the others, don't sweat it. This stands independently of the rest. I'll provide context if it's missing. In the previous episodes, I talked about the lawsuits and the likelihood that they're even real. It's so hard to tell if this is real or completely made up by Greg because it's really convincing. But the lawyer friends I have called Greg's local courthouse to try to find a trace of this lawsuit, and it doesn't seem to exist. So it's anybody's guess. In this episode, Greg is going to talk about how he's a perpetual victim of cancel culture, and then he proceeds to try to cancel musicians he doesn't like, like Beyonce. Moral consistency was never his strong suit. Anyways, let's give this a listen and see what he had to say for himself. And I'm not called Romans 8, 28 and 29 to be conformed to the image of Greg Locke. I'm called to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, there's so much unholiness in our churches. People walking in evil. I mean, let's be honest. Can I be right. honest? Yes. And, and, and I, when I say some of you, you got to understand, we got tens of thousands of people watching now and watching later. Not on YouTube, but nonetheless. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm generalizing, right? Th these are like shotgun messages. Just, <laughs> just let the little pebbles and pellets and bullets go all over the place. But let me tell you where we are in America. Okay. In the church, by and large, and you know it's true, 90% of professing believers would defend Beyonce over the Bible. Okay, I don't know what he means. In what circumstance would Beyonce, would Beyonce be like opposed to the Bible? I, he says in 90% of the cases, Christians, is that what he said? Christians would defend Beyonce over the Bible? Hmm? You're like, oh my goodness, has he been looking through my phone? Nope, but the Holy Ghost has. And he's ashamed of your playlist. Oh yeah, you're not you're not allowed to appreciate most music, right? Flat out ashamed of it. And there are people that will defend the culture of Hollywood and never even quote a Bible verse a day in their life because oh that's offensive. Yeah, here's the thing about Greg Locke. He has this weird obsession with Hollywood elites, quote unquote, thinks that they're like running the world or whatever other nonsense. So, yeah. You know what's offensive to me? This culture shoving that godless nonsense down our kids' throats. That's what's offensive to me. That's what's offensive to me. And then, you know, people are like, oh, my goodness, you know, our, our preacher, he just comes off half cocked sometimes. It's really not half cocked. It's pretty calculated. No, it's half cocked. It's not calculated at all. He doesn't write anything down. He doesn't. He's not following an outline. He's not planning this stuff out. Sometimes he gets up there with the intent to make an ass of himself. And in that way, I suppose it's calculated. But nothing that he says here is planned at all. So I, I have no idea how he can stand there and say that with a straight face. <laughs> it's pretty calculated. I'm just telling you, stop defending the culture. Because holiness won't defend it. God ain't going to defend it. I've told you before, I'll tell you again, the only cancel culture I care about is when Jesus says, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. That's the only cancel culture I'll ever worry about. Okay, great. I don't really care. Cancel culture, the whole idea of cancel culture is actually anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. Dead serious. So if you're unfamiliar with this, I've talked about this before. It's been a while. But there's this document that Hitler claimed to have found on a dead Jewish soldier. OK, and he published this and referenced it heavily in Mein Kampf and other places, published it and passed it out to everybody in Germany. It was not found on a dead Jewish soldier. Obviously, it was forged from a book written in the 1850s in France, had nothing to do with Jews, but it, it was forged from that book in 1902 by a group called the Okrana. It was uh, the precursor to the, the KGB, and it made all kinds of claims about Jewish people controlling the world and 
pulling strings like puppet masters and blah, 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 blah. every conspiracy theory you can imagine that's out there today, just about every one of them originated in this document. It's called Protocols of the Elders of Zion. The Elders of Zion aren't even real. It wasn't even a real group of people. Like, nothing about it was real. None of it. But it was believed to be a secret document that was produced by the Jews. And you know what was included in this document? Cancel culture. They claimed that the elites were going to try to cancel people who spoke out against them in this whole cancel culture thing. Dead serious. This is an anti I'm sorry. This is an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory that dates back to 1902. And in all seriousness, the left cancels people and the right cancels people. You think the left is the only group of people canceling? No. The right cancels more often than the left does. What do you think would happen if Donald Trump came out as gay tomorrow? You think that he would be A-OK? You think there wouldn't be any cancel culture coming out of the woodwork trying to cancel him? No, the, the right has arguably more guardrails for appropriate behavior in society than the left. You are, there are way more things you're not allowed to do as somebody on the right than somebody on the left. So when you hear this bullshit about cancel culture, just point out how often the right cancels people. It's constant. The right canceled Twitter. The right cancels everybody constantly. The rest of it don't matter. YouTube don't matter. Facebook don't matter. Twitter don't matter. White House don't matter. Doesn't matter. Your mom doesn't matter. I want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. That's what I want to hear. But you know what the Bible says in Hebrews? Let's just get practical, right? Let's blow some denominational theology out of the water. Hebrews says, without holiness, comma, no man shall see the Lord. You say, well, I walked an aisle. I prayed a prayer. There's a lot of aisle walking prayer prayers that are going to bust hell wide open. Because, see, we've been taught as long as we, you know, now will lay me down to sleep, you know, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Come into my life and save me. Now, what that means is I'm going to go out and live like hell and do anything I want to. And I'm going to fornicate and I'm going to smoke drugs and I'm going to watch naked, wicked, rated R movies. And I'm going to enjoy myself and I'm going to shack up and I'm going to live in sin. And I ain't going to go to church and I ain't going to read my Bible. And I'm going to do anything that I jolly will please. I'm going to be a hot mess for Jesus. Well, aren't you allowed to do all of that stuff because Jesus died for your sins? I mean, why did Jesus have to come back in the first place? Why couldn't God just snap his fingers and bring about the end anyways? Do you want to know the real answer to that? The real answer is because Jesus was expected to bring about the end in his lifetime. And when he died, it threw a wrench into the works. Everybody was confused about what was going on because he was supposed to have brought about the end before he died. So they made up a brand new claim about him coming back eventually because nothing that they said made any sense unless jesus was there to bring about the end jesus was supposed to bring the end before he died you're gonna be hot all right <laughs> that's kind of funny i was hot so i took my shirt off and now he's saying you're gonna be hot okay because you live like hell you go to hell sweet I'm excited. Can't wait. There are going to be some cool people there, I suspect. You read Revelation 21, chapter number 8. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the sorcerers and the murderers and the whoremongers shall not have their part in the kingdom of God. Did you know, I heard a man say this the other day. I think it was at the conference. He said 100% of people at funerals get preached into heaven. You ever notice that? You've probably never been to a funeral in your life. Maybe you have. When somebody got up and said, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, oh, oh, Jimmy here's in hell. I've never heard that before. That's true. They're usually talking about how they're in heaven. Because that's comforting. I honestly don't think that they should talk about heaven or hell or not, but that's what some people want, I guess, so whatever. Right? But the sad fact is, Jimmy probably is in hell. Yeah, Greg Locke is obsessed with the idea that everybody is going to hell, except for a very, very small group of people who hated gay people to the appropriate degree. 
but that play games with the Bible, don't really love Jesus, don't know about holiness, pastor wants to stand up and make everybody feel better about himself and give them a false sense of security, drum them all up. Well, you know, old Jimmy wasn't perfect. But at the end of the day, he, he's a pretty good man. He's a pretty good boy. His wife's like walking up to the casket wondering if she's at the right funeral. That's true. Uh, eulogies are not really intended to tell the real story about people most of the time. Um, eulogies are made to make people feel better, it, it seems to me. Which, you know, it is what it is. I believe in being honest personally, but okay, I guess you do you. Been beating the heck out of her for years, drinking like a fish, smoking drugs, being godless, sleeping around on her. and a What if he snorts drugs instead of smokes them? Is that a different situation? Just like, well, you know, he had a few flaws in his life, but oh, you know, Jesus, he, he saved old Jimmy 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Wow, it's fascinating that Greg Locke is refusing to admit this because Greg Locke claims to be a faith-based system as opposed to a works-based system, okay? Now, the distinction is hard to, like, notice at first, but let me just explain. There are two parts of the Bible. One part of the Bible says that you can be saved by grace and grace alone, so no man can boast, right? And then another part of the Bible, written around the same time, so you can't say, like, one is canonically, you know, sooner, so it's more accurate or whatever— uh, the other one says, faith without works is dead. So there's this big debate in the church community about whether God wants you to be like, it wants you to work to prove your love for him, or if you just have to accept Jesus into your heart and boom, that's it, you're done. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Greg Locke claims to be a faith-based system, but then he says things like this. Then he says, you can't just be saved and call it quits. You have to follow through and do this thing and that thing and blah, blah, blah. Which is it? Either God only wants you to prove your love for him once by giving your heart to Jesus, and that's all, or you have to keep working at it, one or the other. I ain't playing them games anymore. So the interesting, the reason that this is interesting to me is because a lot of criticisms from within the church against Greg Locke claim that he is a works-based system despite claiming to be a faith-based system, which is an absolutely fair assessment. He most definitely is a works-based system, whether he wants to admit that or not. You're walking out of vacation Bible school when you were five years old, never changed your life, does not impress me one bit. You better get born again or you're going to go to hell. That's what the Bible says. I'll empty out this tent, don't care. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. He's holy. Walk in the fear of God, church. Clean your DVD cabinet out today. Don't you wait till next week. Deliverance ministers done changed me. They most definitely, yeah, it most definitely has. Deliverance ministry, oh yeah, for the worse. He's getting more and more and more extreme. I can't watch some stuff I used to watch. I can't enjoy it. Makes me sick, turns my stomach. I can't hang around some people I used to hang around, and they, they, they seem like they're pretty cool folks. Till I went through deliverance, and I'm like, whoo, you need deliverance. Am I, am I telling the truth? Whew. You're acting like a nutcase, and I'm really sorry for, the, for him that he's going through this experience, and he doesn't even realize like how damaging this, this path of beliefs has been to his life. What did Pagani say? Am I talking good? Who? Am I talking good? Look, I'm just here to tell you, when we get into God's presence, it'll change things about us. I can't not read my Bible. I can't not pray. I can't not give. I can't not, fa I can't not share my faith and where I go. I can't help it. Because I want to live in the fear of the Lord. I want to be baptized in the holiness of the Lord. I want it to consume me. Now, I ain't talking about being made a Pharisee. 
If you're a Pharisee and a legalist, you don't know about the holiness of God. All you know is about to do this, do this, do this, because you think that holiness is based on your performance. Holiness is based on your position in the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of your position in the Lord Jesus Christ, your practical outlook in life is going to be different. And so if you say that positionally you believe in Jesus, dispositionally it's going to change the way you live. Am I making sense? Not really. So he simply says, Our Father which art in heaven, he's above you. Hallowed, holy be thy name. All right, let's just, let's just go on. Thy kingdom come, and by the way, it's going to. <laughs> okay, any day now. I've been waiting this whole time, but uh, all right. I guess I'll wait a little longer. <laughs> it's going to. I don't know when, I don't know how, I don't know what it looks like, but you better get ready because it's coming to a town near you. Thy kingdom come. Great, okay. Still waiting. We've been waiting 2,000 years. I, you know, I guess I'll, we'll continue waiting. And there'll come a time. And I don't know when that time's going to be, and neither do you. So don't come at me with all these dates. Didn't he just say that? I'm, I'm sick of hearing about your dates. If you accidentally guessed it, God would change the date just for you. <laughs> That's actually a theological belief. If somebody claimed that there was a day, then God would change it specifically because nobody knows the day or the hour or the whatever. Uh, I don't know if, you know, that's something that Greg Locke believes or not, but yeah, that is a pretty standard, uh, Christian belief, which is funny because, you know, with seven, eight, almost 8 billion people on planet earth now, somebody is predicting the end every single day and hell, maybe that's why the end hasn't come now because there's some jag off somewhere claiming that the end is going to come that day. Stop all these dates. Well, you know, if you take this and rewind this and you go to the book of Isaiah and then you go to Deuteronomy and you do this and you go here and you go to the maps, then you go to the concordance. If He's talking about Bible code. Yeah, this is something that uh, right now we're reading this book called Donald J. Trump, the Son of Man, the Christ. It's been a while since we've read it and I have things to do this week, so I'm not going to be able to read it this week either. But that is his position or that's his belief. That's how he arrived at the conclusion that Donald Trump is the son of man, uh, or the Messiah, the, the second coming of Jesus, basically. That's how he came to that conclusion, was through this whole claim that, you know, the Bible says this at that part, and you skip three verses forward, and read the first letter of the second chapter, and blah, blah, blah. That's how he came to the conclusion, partly at least, that Trump is the Messiah. If you go back to Genesis, if you tie this together and this together and this together and this together, you have a mess. That's what you have. That's also how Jehovah's Witnesses came to the conclusion that the end, that Jesus came in 1914. That, that same kind of Bible code logic or whatever. Well, you know, it's a year of Jubilee and about the past. I don't care. That's funny. That one is actually that about the year of Jubilee, the Passover and stuff. I think that one was from the cl recent claim that September 23rd was going to be the end of days or whatever. There was a lot of that going around on September 23rd, 2022. TikTok's out the wazoo of people claiming it. You don't know when Jesus is coming. So do not argue with me about that. And if, if, if you pass out one more piece of literature in our church, trying to tell people Jesus is going to come next week, I'm going to ask you to leave because I ain't fooling with your Jehovah's Witness, Seventh-day Adventist, law-abiding nonsense. I ain't it's actually interesting he grouped those two things together, Jehovah's Witness and Seventh-day Adventist, because they are cousins, basically. Uh, the founder of Seventh-day Adventists, Ellen G. White, and the founder of Jehovah's Witnesses knew each other and went to the same congregation, the same Millerite church, before the Millerite movement, like, died, of course. But yeah, they're very closely linked, and they have very similar beliefs about the end times and stuff. Which person was going to their church passing out literature, I wonder? Jehovah's Witnesses would, are barred from ever attending a service of a worldly church or whatever. So they're most definitely not showing up at his church and attending services. I don't care if he claims that or not. It seemed like that's what he was claiming, but okay. Nestle with it. 
And let me just go one step further for all these seven-day Adventists that watch me for some reason and send me letters. You worshiping the devil because you meet on Sunday. Jesus fulfilled the law. Jesus became my Sabbath. And I'm here to tell you, I worship on the first day of the week because of the glory of the resurrection. I am not under the law of the Sabbath. Jesus said there will come a day. It doesn't matter when and it doesn't matter where, but it matters who you will worship. I'm telling you, Saturday worship as far as the law is concerned, is a demonic doctrine. Interesting point. Um, I think I agree with him that the Sabbath is unnecessary now that Jesus came back and blah, 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 whatever other thing. I'm sorry, not that he came back. Now that Jesus has come in the first place, not that he came back, but that just that he came back forever ago to fulfill the law. Uh, in my opinion, I think that the law was fulfilled biblically, so he doesn't have to worry about the Sabbath anymore. However, however, if you're circumcised, you are required to follow the whole law. That means observing, observing the Sabbath, not eating shellfish, not eating pork, uh, not wearing cotton and linen blends, i.e. polyester, all of it. According to Galatians 5, if you're circumcised, you are required to follow all 613 commandments of the Old Testament. But... Christians conveniently ignore that completely. Shut up and don't come at me with all that nonsense. You got to worship on Saturday because of the law. I'm not under the law, Scipio. Unless you're circumcised, in which case you are. I would be willing to bet in America, I would be willing to bet that Greg Locke probably is required to follow the law. But that's neither here nor there. I'm under the grace of the resurrected Savior. If you want to look that up, I believe it's Galatians 5.3. So his kingdom's going to come, and I don't know when, and I don't know how, and I've changed my theological position on all that pre-trib stuff, okay? And I don't care what you think about that neither. I ain't arguing with it. That's why I don't preach a lot on prophecy. Because for years I preached on it like I knew everything about it, got in the Bible and figured out I didn't know nothing about it except what the Baptist told me. Right? Yeah, Greg Locke used to be Baptist. He went to a Baptist seminary. And as a result, has all kinds of weird beliefs about, you know, Baptists and all this other garbage. And then he left Baptists behind back in, I think, 2011 or 2013 or somewhere in there and changed the name of his church from Global Vision Baptist to Global, Global Vision Bible Church. So, yeah, he's got a lot of weird ideas about this. I guess that invalidates his seminary training completely, right? Uh, Y'all okay? Am I, am, I, am I talking good? No. His kingdom's coming. His kingdom's coming. His kingdom's coming. Just be ready. You say, when am I supposed to be ready? Right now. And in a hundred years from now. Just make sure you are ready. Get some oil in your lamp and don't be taken by surprise. Lift up your head. Your redemption draws nigh because his kingdom is coming. Gird up and fill your horn with oil is what Greg Locke is saying. Gird up. And let me just say this, his kingdom is coming no matter who's in the White House. Then why does Greg Locke care who's in the White House is my question to him. Why does he care if it doesn't matter at all? Don't get that. <laughs> I don't never stop to drink, but I'm going to need one right now. Everybody's all excited about 2024. I ain't slight nobody. I'll be in Mar-a-Lago in two weeks. Oh, I got friends everywhere. When did this come out? I think this is brand new, right? This came out November 20th. Yeah, he said he'd be at Mar-a-Lago in a couple of weeks. So I guess he's still a Trump supporter. After Donald Trump came out in favor of vaccines, Greg Locke said some pretty harsh words about him. He was very unhappy that... Donald Trump decided to support vaccines and getting vaccinated. Uh, Greg Locke is super anti-vax. So anyway, uh, I'm actually kind of surprised that he decided to, you know, continue to talk about Donald Trump in some kind of a supportive way. Weird. I'm sick about half of them. Hmm. But look, I know January 2021, we got the reawaken conference coming here and we, we're going to host him. We have 3000 tickets. Now Wow, I didn't realize that. They're hosting the Reawaken America tour. Oh, God. 
If you don't know about the Reawaken America tour, it's a full-blown QAnon conference. I've talked about it on my Fireside Chat channel a lot. And it's got Michael Flynn. Uh, let's see. It's hosted by Clay Clark, technically, but Michael Flynn makes an appearance at just about every one of them, and so does Eric Trump, uh, especially recently. They are a far-right extremist pro-Trump conference. So, yeah, absolutely crazy. I had no idea he was hosting them. And by the way, th they, they can all... Wait, when was that again? I'm sick about half of them. Hmm? But look... I know January 2021, we got the Reawaken Conference coming here, and we, we're going to host it. January 2021? 3,000 tickets. Now, by the way, they, they can all stay over and join us for an actual church service on Sunday, but this is not a Global Vision event, although I'm opening and closing both days. There'll be 3,500 people here. It'll be like a stomped ant bed. If you're coming to that, you, you can't say, well, I'm a Global Vision person, so I'm just going to get... You won't have a seat, all right? That's a ticketed event, and we don't do ticketed events. That's all on them. We're just letting them host it here. Am I making sense? And if you're working here, we'll get you a T-shirt. You can get in for free. But all that to say this. Yeah, I know we host some political stuff. <laughs> I, I know all in politicians. You'd, you'd be blown away if you look at my cell phone. You'd be like, what? Not really. I know that, uh, you know, a lot of politicians work with this guy. I, I wouldn't be blown away by that. Most people probably would be. Them people far from impress me anymore. I think that stuff was cool. Y'all be in the back room. I'm, you know, I'm signing my little NDAs in a secret meeting. Can't even have a phone. All the dignitaries walk in. And I was like, <laughs> my goodness and then all of a sudden I get in the deliverance ministry God changes my life I sit in the room now and I'm like my goodness what a bunch of demons well then why work with them I don't understand if he thinks that they're demons then why work with them at all <laughs> nobody at this point at least has to has to even ask, you know, who, who are you going to vote for? Look, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> At this point, things are such a mess. It is not going to matter who's in the White House. His kingdom's going to come. Oh, shit. This is interesting. 154.02. Let me write this one down. Who is Greg Locke going to vote for? Okay. Interesting. Go on. The church is going to rock on. It just is. It just is. So, look, <laughs> can I? I, uh, I built quite the following mess around with Donald Trump, and I like him. I'm not against This is actually a big deal because he most definitely turned against Donald Trump for a while there, a long while. Uh, it I will establish that in a couple of minutes if need be. Let's just keep listening for the moment. Let me step back. I, uh, I built quite the following mess around with Donald Trump, and I like him. I'm not against Trump. Now. I don't care if you amen or not. Somebody better strap your depends on, you're about to pee yourself. <laughs> hmm? I love him. I, I like Mike Flynn. Okay, this is actually a big deal that he's saying all of this. And let me show you why this is such a big deal. Because this is the last time Greg Locke spoke about Donald Trump. Let me show you the last time he, he talked about him. Greg Locke did talk about Donald Trump during the Mar-a-Lago stuff, like when he his when Mar-a-Lago was searched over the documents and stuff. Locke said that it was witchcraft that caused that and blah, blah, blah. But beyond that, this is the last time Greg said a word about Donald Trump. This is early January 2022. So I'm going to say something. I don't care how ticked off you get. I'm going to say something. Listen to me. Stop. If I say stop. Stop sitting on your butt and waiting for Donald Trump to do something in this nation. That's straight up turning on him, right? Stop it. 
stop it. He gave the evangelicals a mighty voice, and I'm glad. Whether he runs or not, it's on him, not on me. But I'm sick of Trump worship in this church. You hear me? Let me tell you something. He was lied to, and he knows it. And his arrogance won't let him change his mind. That's a big deal, what he's saying here. This is an evangelical leader that was at least partly responsible for getting Trump elected in the first place. 2.2 million subbies is how many Greg Locke has on Facebook. Uh, his church isn't that big, you know, 600 to 1,000 people on any given Sunday, from my understanding. But he's got a massive online following. And the fact that he kind of turned people against Trump after Trump said all that stuff about being pro-vax and stuff is a big deal. Again, this is the last time he spoke about Trump at all. And this is what he had to say about him. I'm telling you right now, on the authority of the Bible, if Donald Trump does not get out in front of this vaccine nonsense, he is going to lose his voter base in the next coming election. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. He's trying to force Donald Trump to reconsider his position on vaccines. It's going to happen. I don't care, man. Don't come back. I don't care. If you come here because I like Trump, you're in the wrong house anyhow. You better come here because I love Jesus. And suddenly he's all about Jesus. That's weird because up to this point, Locke was all about Trump and politics. That's like what his whole thing was all about. Uh, and now it's about Jesus. I'm In Interesting timing. In these games. He needs to quit pushing this mess because the greatest president that we've ever known is going to be blamed for more deaths than we've ever seen. And his arrogance won't let him see it. So that's the last time Locke spoke about Donald Trump, aside from mentioning that he thought that Mar-a-Lago was the result of demon possession or witchcraft or whatever other nonsense. So this is his re-entry into the whole situation. I'm assuming he's walking back into this subject about Trump because after the midterms ended in 2022, we came to find that Donald Trump was being abandoned by the party. People were jumping ship. They didn't want anything to do with Trump anymore. The New York Post and a bunch of other far-right newspapers published a whole thing about how Trump is stupid and terrible and we shouldn't be following him anymore. And other evangelical leaders jumped ship too, like Robert Jeffress. That was a big deal, that one. He is an incredibly influential evangelical leader. And I guess Greg Locke felt the need to address it from his pulpit, fascinatingly. I, I, I could call him today and he would answer. Donald Trump? Yeah, probably. He told me I was his favorite preacher. That's yeah, probably because you're the most influential and firebrand. Pretty cool. I love Eric Trump. Eric Trump is involved in the Reawaken America tour. I've been with him many times. We about to all doll up. Me and a little... I like that. Miss Greg Locke. Hey, Miss Greg Locke. That was good, Paul. <laughs> we about to go back for round two down in mar lago I get invited to all the fun stuff, but it ain't nearly as fun when you get behind the veil as you think it is. I know y'all think all that White House stuff's cool. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing white about that house. It's evil, dark, wicked. Then why is Locke willing to vote for any of these people if he thinks that they're evil, dark, and wicked? Republicans and Democrats. Then why does he vote for them? So I'm, I'm just going to say this, and I'm going to keep going because this, this is just where I'm at. Because I'm all about the kingdom come. And I love this nation. I'll give my life fighting for this nation. We're going to keep the church open. We're going to stand for religious freedom. Okay, nobody is asking you to die for the country. Dying for something is easy. Living for something is hard. Why don't you try respecting the rights of the people around you instead of being willing to, like, kill yourself in service of whatever insane extremist cause you believe in in that moment? 
We're going to stand for the First and the Second Amendment, and the Second Amendment protects our First Amendment. You better know that one right now. When Greg Locke says that, he says, we're going to stand for our First and Second Amendment. He, he meant it exactly as he said it. Our First and Second Amendment. Not everybody's. His. Seriously. Let me show you what I mean by that. This is a video came out October 26, 2022. It, it was a lead up to a book burning that he was about to hold. And he claimed with absolutely no evidence or no good evidence anyways, that the local Freemasons intended to show up and stop him from holding the book burning by force. I don't believe that for a second, but okay. Uh, he was so... He was whipping his people into a blood frenzy over it and was ostensibly so upset over this fake email or what I believe to be a fake email that he comes out there and he says this. When those guys get dressed, most of them pastors get dressed in the dark because they put on their women's underwear. huh? They okay, I don't know what that has to do with anything or why he even said it, but okay. At the wife's undies on, bunch of sissies. They're not violating our First Amendment right. We have a Tennessee constitutional right to burn occultic items, and we have a national constitutional right to do exactly what we're going to be doing and are protected by the law. We got Absolutely true. He most definitely was protected by the law to do that. Nobody was trying to stop him. Nobody showed up that day. The email that Greg Locke allegedly received was from somebody who is not on the member rolls in the first place. And the name that was used was from the movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. I ju I'm sorry. I don't believe any of it. it. It's And then Greg Locke claimed that they deleted the email right off of his phone while he was reading. It's just nonsense, dude. I don't believe any of it. But here's where it gets important. All right. Listen to what Locke says next. He says, we have a right to do this to hold this book burning. He says that accurately. He did. And he did hold that book burning. And he says, if somebody tr shows up and tries to stop him... I'll law your own speed dial. I'll sue every one of them in his I will be the owned mayor of Mount Juliet, Tennessee. <laughs> and I'll ban every witch from this town. I'll tell you that right now, I will. See, he was never in favor of free speech. He was in favor of his free speech. Nobody else's. His. He's talking about being persecuted, being prevented from exercising his right to whatever, free speech. And he says, in retaliation for somebody trying to stop me, supposedly, I'm going to ban them from existence. Really. He never cared about free speech. He cared about his speech, always. So they, they try to come in here and shut down our First Amendment. We'll meet him at the door with our Second Amendment. Somebody say, man, we ain't playing them games, right? Y'all know all that. Y'all know I'm bold on that guy. I don't... I he said, he's said this like a billion times already. I get it. You want to sh people. Okay. Thank you. I don't care about what that cra crowd thinks about me. But I'm going to tell you, and this is God's honest truth. God hold me accountable to it right now. I love the man. I'm talking about do loving Donald Trump. I traveled on his buses for months without my family. I'm on Nancy Pelosi's hit list because of it. Okay, Nancy Pelosi doesn't have a hit list. I have no idea what he's even talking about right now. I'll go down fighting for people that are doing right. Now, look, there's some people I won't go to heaven with that I'll go to jail with to save the nation. You understand that? I hang out with a lot of politicians that aren't born again. I'm, I'll go to jail with them. I just ain't going to heaven with them, but I'm working on that part, too. Okay. But I'm just going to make this one statement, and we're going to be done. And we're going to keep going, because I want his kingdom to come. And his kingdom's not America. His kingdom's the whole world. Now, if America falls, the whole world's in a mess. I get that. Everybody knows that. Joe Biden knows that. That's why he's trying to sell us out to the Chinese, but that's a whole other message. Oh, please tell me more. Joe Biden is trying to sell us out to the Chinese. Can you elaborate on that? In what way? What is Joe Biden doing? Is this like, okay, there are some QAnoners who believe that Joe Biden has given China clearance to use a weather gun to shoot a weather gun at the, uh, the United States 
to test it as a new weapon against the U.S. Is that what he's talking about? I mean, that is like delusional fantasy land to the extreme. But is that what he's referring to? I can't tell. I don't know. I'm about to get banned on dadgum all of them today, I guess. He's already banned on dadgum all of them. He's streaming on his own website like InfoWars does. But I'm, here's the one thing I want God to hold me accountable for. When I get in the room with him. Oh, he's not banned on Facebook. Uh, he's still on Facebook. He's got 2.2 million subbies on there. Okay, so when he gets in a room with Donald Trump. Go on. I'm about to get banned on dadgum all of them today, I guess. But I'm, here's the one thing I want God to hold me accountable for. When I get in the room with him, I ain't got but one question these days. You hear me? I ain't got but one. Are you running? Are you not? I don't care. Are you back on Twitter? I don't care. The, the last time I said something derogatory about him pumping that, uh, that, that poison shot, within two days, the administration had done reached out to me. Are you turning? I said, I ain't turning on nobody. I'm a truth teller. No matter who's hiding it, chaps. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> He's a truth teller. Uh, no, in no, no way, shape or form is Greg Locke a truth teller. But OK, the minute the administration recognized that he was losing some evangelical support and was getting worried. And so, I mean, I'm, a, I'm taking Greg Locke at his word on this one. I think it's reasonable to assume that the Trump administration did contact him. But OK, let's keep listening. So let me just thin you out for a minute and tell you something. Thing, thing, T-H-I-N-G. He's going to thing us out, okay? I ain't got but one question for him. Are you a Freemason? Donald Trump? No, I mean, he may be 33rd degree, which is like the honorary title that, that's given to people. But I don't believe that he's a Freemason. He thinks that he he thinks that Freemasons control the, the world and all this other garbage. It's complete nonsense. J just shake my hand normal and tell me. Say I won't. I ain't got nothing to lose. So here's the deal. I honest to God right now don't believe he is. That's why the system hates him because he's a wrecking ball to the system. He's not part of all that Illuminati stuff, which is super real. Okay, it's funny that he uses that term Illuminati. The word Illuminati was created by some people in the 1960s writing into Playboy magazine with these conspiracy theories that were contradictory. They wrote a bunch of conspiracies in to like the, I don't know, editor or to the op-ed or whatever it is that they have in there, uh, letter to the editor or whatever. They wrote all these letters in with conspiracy theories that contradicted each other because they thought it'd be funny. It was a joke. And they came up with the name for the like big evil organization that ran everything. They called it the Illuminati. It was all just a big prank, but it stuck. This is why you don't come up with conspiracy theories ever, even as a joke, seriously, because they'll stick. So, OK, tell me more about the Illuminati, Greg. OK. So uh, all I want is a man to look me in my eyes and honestly evaluate the question coming out of my mouth. Because if, if he is as true to this nation as I think he is, and thank God I still think that, I'll fight a buzzsaw barehanded. You'll fight a buzzsaw barehanded? Nobody is asking you to do that, Greg. To help him save... The Republic. But let them claps die down. If I find out this is just a running interference for the left because you're really on their team and you're doing backdoor deals with your fish fry, secret handshake, 33rd degree Masons. Okay, again, 33rd degree is just a, like a, a title bestowed upon you by somebody else. It is not, you didn't make it up through the ranks to whatever. Like, he thinks that there's some huge conspiracy out there. This just blows me away, dude. This is just weird. You better know this church won't ever be the same. 
because I'll publicly burn the entire establishment down on both sides. Of Please do. Why are you withholding information that could be pertinent to people? Like, not too long ago, Greg Locke claimed that he had a dead man switch with incriminating information about Kenneth Copeland. Claimed that Copeland, he had video of Copeland doing something illicit with an unwilling participant. Just put it that way. And if Gre and Greg Locke was afraid of being killed. And, and if he did, then all of this information was going to leak out onto the internet. Dude, if you have this information, turn it over to police now. Seriously, why is he holding on to this? It is almost worse that Greg Locke would not turn it over rather than hold on to it. It, it is worse. Like, this is disgusting, dude. He should be turning this stuff over now. It's the same situation we find ourselves in. He says he's going to burn down the establishment if they blah, blah, blah. If you have, like, incriminating evidence, turn it over. What are you doing? Of the owl. Without one second's hesitation over all of it. And you better know that's the only question I care anything about. So all these people that think I'm connected to his hip. You better know I follow Jesus. I believe the kingdom's on the way and we better prepare people and prepare our hearts. And if I find out that I wasted my time fooling with people, leaving my wife, putting a target on my back, getting the haters to want to burn down our church, all for people that were part of what I was fighting against, you better know I'll raise such hell you ain't ever seen crazy preaching. Dude. People don't have a problem with you because you like Donald Trump. Nobody does. Even I don't give a shit if you like Donald Trump. My problem is with the way that you want to be act like a stochastic terrorist against the LGBT community and others. That's my problem with you, Greg. I don't give a shit how you feel about Trump, honestly. You hear me? So I just thought I'd share that. Like he fundamentally misunderstands why people are upset completely. He has no idea. Lock 2024. Just kidding, baby. <laughs> he says he's kidding, but he's not really. Uh, he's making it out like, okay, he says lock 2024 like he's going to run for president. This is not his first mention of running for president. Dude, I have a clip collection that's years old, seriously. I have clips uh, that you wouldn't even believe. This one's from May 22nd, 2022. Check this out. This is from the time that he claimed that he gave up tax-exempt status. By the way, this crowd going crazy. I told my wife the other day, I said, y'all better be careful. I'll run for president. Yeah, y'all be careful. Push my buttons. We'll, we'll, have, we'll have a pastor president up in that White House. We'll clean that sucker out. That's what we'll do. We'll shut it down. So he, he claims he's kind of joking about that, but I really don't think he is. I think this is a, a decision that he's seriously considered. I don't discount anything at this point. After seeing Donald Trump go from being a complete scumbag loser that nobody liked to actually winning the presidency, I don't discount the possibility that absolutely anybody could win. That being said, Sargon of Akkad is, give or take, roughly the size of Greg Locke, and he's also pretty extreme. He ran for some kind of political office uh, in Britain, I believe, and pretty much failed miserably. I think he got like 6% of the vote or something. Your social media presence feels big in the moment, but when you're working on like a grand scale, like on a, a countrywide scale this way, like Greg Locke is, and like uh, Sargon of Akkad was, 
it's really not that you're not that you're not as influential as you feel not anywhere near as influential so tentatively i say i don't really worry about greg Locke running for president but so take that with a grain of salt we should probably be a little concerned but yeah don't lose sleep out don't lose sleep over it <laughs> that, that's too early i can't do it that quick it's too early. I can't do it that quick. I.e., he does intend to run for president. That's that's what I'm picking up here. Can't do it that quick. Thy kingdom come. Whew, internet gonna be lit up today. But I'm not saying I'm crazy. I'm just being reasonable, right? Not really. I don't want to get hoodwinked. I don't want to get hoodwinked. There's a reason people push this shot stuff. They're part of the system. Okay, they're, they're, oh, I, I just want people to be honest with me. I'm tired of dealing with dishonest people. Of course, in religion and politics, that's all you deal with for the most part, 98%. I, I, I'm just saying. I'm all about holiness and deliverance and getting people ready for the kingdom. No, no, I, I, I ain't looking to load up and go today, but I'm looking to get a load up so we can go one day. So look, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I still go to all the political rallies, rah, rah, bish, kum, ba. Yeah, yeah, I love America. Okay. Oh, he's a Christian nationalist. I think it's okay to love your nation and love Jesus. That is okay. Yeah, yeah, 100%. It, it absolutely is okay. That's perfectly fine. I have no issue with that. You're trying to meld the two together. That's my hang up. You're trying to combine them into a mishmash where you're using religion to control the state. That's very different. I think it's a shame if you just want to let the whole thing burn to the ground, let these socialists take over. Okay, there are no socialists in any kind of position of power in the United States. And not combining church and state is not allowing it to burn to the ground. They're two different things completely. But notice how he wants to combine the two like that to try to kind of throw off the accusation of Christian nationalists. I believe that the Christian nationalist accusation is actually really damaging to them, or I believe that they believe that it's damaging to them, and that's why they fight it. By the way, I'm not much of a prophet nor son of a prophet, but I did say not too long ago, if you want to rewind the tape or whatever tape, dear God, help me. <laughs> I, I, I told you Nancy Pelosi is going to be out. Okay, he does claim to be a prophet, actually, uh, and he, he prophesies regularly. He has done so in his book. I read his book on my Telltale Reads channel recently, and he gave us a prophecy in that book. So he does claim to be a prophet. He just doesn't openly say, I am a prophet. He just prophesies directly rather than claiming that he is a prophet. And I suspect that's because if he never actually comes out and says, I am a prophet of God, but he prophesies anyways, he can't, he believes that he can't be like stoned to death for it or whatever when a Christian nationalist state eventually comes into being, which he believes it will. Now, claiming that Nancy Pelosi is going to lose her position of Speaker of the House does not mean that you are a prophet of God. You live in a fantasy land. If that's your bar for profit, that's ridiculous. That's not what a prophet is. It's not what a prophecy is. But okay. <laughs> Goodbye, Nancy. Come out in Jesus' name. Goodbye, Nancy. Okay, you realize Nancy Pelosi is not leaving the house, right? D is he not connecting the dots on this? Nancy Pelosi is still going to be in the house. She's just not going to be the speaker of the house. Nancy. So I'm hopeful. Right? I'm hopeful. I really am. That, that things can turn around. House and Senate can figure some stuff out. But the, the only house I'm accountable for is this house. And, and this house. I ain't accountable to that house. I'm going to fight for that house. I'm going to fight for the rights of this nation. I'll go down with the whole ship fighting. To make Nobody is asking you to do that, Greg. All they're asking you is to chill out and stop being a nutcase. So we can keep doing what we're doing right now. But I'm just letting you know, as I said a moment ago, I ain't, I ain't patty caking with demons. 
Okay, I didn't think that he was patty caking with demons before, but he's said it enough times now that I suspect maybe he is. My loyalty is not to either one of them. Yeah, and that's what I'm going to sound like if he tells me yes. <laughs> okay, that was a creepy noise. And I'm going to loosen my tie and I'm going to walk out of Mar-a-Lago and I ain't going back. I don't need them. And they don't need me. If, if, if everybody's truthful, if everybody's good, if all chips on the table, we good. We're going to fight. We're going to win. But if I find out people have been shady, I know I normally save this kind of stuff for Wednesday, but I just thought I'd tell everybody. I'm out. I, I got loyalty to the Lord. That's it. My loyalty is not to any party, any politician, any preacher, any denomination, nobody. I've told you a thousand times, if God's pleased and my wife's smiling, y'all in trouble. If God's pleased and my wife's smiling and your mom's pleased, y'all in trouble. When God says hush and my wife says hush, we cool. I'll stop. See, right there. This is actually really fascinating. That I talked about this earlier, too, but I, let me write this down. Hang on. 204. What he just said was, when God says hush, I'll stop. When God says hush, I'll stop. What that means is I'm going to continue being an obnoxious fool until God tells me to chill out. If God never tells me to chill out, I'm not going to. I'm going to act like a nutter butter until he tells me to stop. Uh, that's what this is all about. Only there are no guardrails. God doesn't. God is not like communicating with Greg Locke. He's not in there telling him to chill out because either he's not real or he doesn't take an active role in people's lives or he just doesn't care about Greg Locke personally. God is not going to jump in and say, chill out, Greg. It's not going to happen. When God tells me to hush, I'll stop. He's never going to. So Greg Locke is going to get progressively more and more and more extreme because there are no guardrails for this guy. There are guardrails that he believes that are there that aren't. He's blind and he's feeling around for them and says, until I feel them, I'm going to keep walking. He will never feel the guardrails. But I'm telling you, I'm a different man this year than I was last year. So I pray all my connections pan out well. But I'll run down every rabbit hole till I find out if they do or they don't. Everybody all right? I.e., if it turns out that Donald Trump really is a Freemason, then I'm going to freak out on him or something. Time is it? 1231. Mm, hallelujah. Somebody say Duncan time. Dunkin' time. That new one opened down the road I went this morning. <laughs> God, this dude loves Dunkin' Donuts. He's actually gotten himself into some hot water by visiting Dunkin' Donuts with no mask on and losing his mind on them. It's kind of comical. Thy kingdom come. Watch this. I'm going I'm to I'm read this. We're going to pray. We're going to pick up next week. Thy will be done. Ooh, I like that. By the way, the will don't get done if you don't have the presence of an understanding of the position of who the Father is. Thy will be done. But here's the principle. In earth, as, if I say as, as, means in like manner in the same way as it is in heaven. Now think about that. This is a principle. Hallowed be your name. You're holy. You're righteous. We walk in the fear of the Lord. His kingdom's coming. We live holy. We live righteous because he's holy and righteous and because of that fact, he's coming again, and we want to be found holy and righteous with our lamps full of oil when he gets here. Amen, church? That's the whole principle. It all flows. That's why it's a pattern. It's all connected. You can't take one verse out of its immediate context or you end up getting a pretext. Dude, this is a wacky episode that we're watching right now. ...of who the Father is. Thy will be done. But here's the principle. In earth, as, if I say as, means in like manner in the same way as it is in heaven. Now think about that. This, this is a principle. Hallowed be your name. You're holy. 
You're righteous. We walk in the fear of the Lord. His kingdom's coming. We live holy. We live righteous because he's holy and righteous. And because of that fact, he's coming again. And we want to be found holy and righteous with our lamps full of oil when he gets here. Amen, church? That's the whole principle. It all flows. That's why it's a pattern. It's all connected. You can't take one verse out of its immediate context or you end up getting a pretext. That's how you get a cult. It's all... That's actually that's actually really interesting he says that. That's reasonably true, what he just said there. Taking verses out of the context that they were originally in and combining them with other verses and stuff like that has led to a lot of religious cults like Jehovah's Witnesses did that. They took the verse they took verses from Revelation, Numbers, and the book of Daniel, combined them together to come to some Bible math that says Jesus will come back in nineteen 19- 74 i'm sorry 1874 and then he didn't so they changed their little bible math around recalculated concluded he'd be here in like uh, i don't know 1875 then 1901 i think and 1913 1914 1922 25 1975 they kept recalculating but the point is they work it all from those different verses they smash them together into like a new book of the bible effectively uh, so, yeah, what he's saying here is actually pretty accurate. Unfortunately, Greg Locke does some of that, too. So Interconnected. It's all the pattern. He says, thy will be done. Dear God, your will be done. He just said his kingdom is going to come. But before the kingdom gets here, here's the will of God. Thy will be done in earth as, in the same manner, is, is in heaven. Question, is the will of God being done in heaven 100% of the time, yes or no? So why is the will of God not being done here when the principle is it should be done here like it is done up there? I mean, didn't Satan, like, wreak havoc in heaven at one point? It wasn't always like that, supposedly, according to the Bible. Everybody's like, well, one day when I get to heaven, everything will be glorious. How come it's not glorious right now? We sing songs like, it will be worth it all. I think it's pretty jacked up cool right now. I know it'll be glorious in the presence of the Lord when we have a body like unto his glorious body and we don't have no sickness and no disease and no more demons and no more divorce and no more division and no more deliverance. Listen, I know it's going to be glorious. But he didn't say, thy will be done only in heaven when we get there. He said, thy will be done now in earth as it is being done right now in heaven. You know what's going on in heaven? People going crazy for Jesus. You know, that's what makes heaven heaven. It ain't the streets of gold. It ain't the rainbow around the throne of God. It's not the crystal sea. It's not the crystal sea. Oh, that's fascinating that he says that because that's actually straight from Cat Kerr. Cat Kerr talks about the crystal sea. Oh, oh God, this is fast. Okay, I got to write this one down. Uh, This may not mean much to a lot of my viewers who aren't here regularly and don't watch the cat curse stuff but oh my god that's actually really interesting and i'll I'll probably do like a long form breakdown of why that's so interesting sometime soon it's not the the golden thrones it's not the seraphims running around and flying around it's not the beast it's not the elders it's not the size the scope the breadth the depth the height the expansion of the city you know what makes heaven heaven jesus and I tell you right now, I double dog dare you to read the Bible. You know what's happening right now in heaven? People going buck wild crazy for Jesus. I mean, they shouting for Jesus. They're running for Jesus. They're screaming for Jesus. Loud music for Jesus. And I'm like, man, y'all come to that global vision. I got to have some earplugs. It's loud up in there. You ain't going to like heaven one bit. This ain't even close to what it's going to be like in heaven. It's going to be deafening when you get up in heaven and you're going to have new ears so you can handle it. I don't like all that loud preaching, that loud praying. I don't like all that loud bass music. I don't like that la, 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 la. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when myriads of angels are screaming and singing and hollering and the saints are screaming and singing and hollering? This is so interesting to me. He has a completely different idea of what heaven is like than Cat Kerr does, for example. He's most definitely taken elements from Cat Kerr, like the Crystal Sea. Uh, Kat Kerr famously names specific areas of heaven that she claims to have been to, personally visited. So he he includes those elements, but he is most definitely listing different attributes, different expectations to heaven. That's fascinating to me.
hollering and there's worship day and night and night and day and day and night and night and day. In point of fact, it's all day because there is no night because he's the light thereof, the Bible says. So if right now in heaven people are going crazy for Jesus, how come right now on earth churches are lukewarm and dying? Dude, I would hate it if it was just all day, all the time. I'd really prefer some nights sometimes. People in heaven right now praying. People in churches right now playing. People in heaven singing and shouting in the presence of God. People on earth miserable and pouting because the preacher went too long. That's me right now. I wish you would hurry up. And hurt their feelings about their favorite politician. <laughs> Y'all got the wrong one up in this house. <laughs> I'm crazy now. I used to be wild, but I have harnessed my wildness. Now I'm just crazy. <laughs> okay. Wow. He used to be wild, and now he's just crazy. <laughs> Crazy for the Lamb of God. Whew, I can't get enough of Jesus. Thy will be done in earth. You know, in heaven right now. Could it be Satan? Thank you so much for the super chat, Nericol. I appreciate that. Jojo Granum, is Greg Locke the Antichrist? May as well be. I think if I believed any of this, I would believe that Donald Trump was the Antichrist. He fits it to a T. It's almost like he's trying to. <laughs> I watched part one, and, and as I watched, all I could think is keep giving your neighbors more ammo. You're... Your tent, thanks for all you do. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Yeah, absolutely. And on top of that, he's renting his tent out to the Reawaken America tour, come to find out. I mean, it's a residential area. I don't think the judge is going to appreciate that very much. I mean, it's just a given festival. They're going to be throwing down their crowns at the feet of the Lamb and say, Thou art worthy. He that redeemed us back to God again out of every nation, every tribe, every language, every people, every tongue. There's a lot going on in heaven. While on earth. Mine, 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 mine. Yeah, it's kind of weird that that's like how Greg Locke acts on earth all the time, right? He's all upset that his neighbor wants some peace and quiet. And instead of peace and quiet, Greg Locke is setting out to, like, harass the dude for no fucking reason. Yeah, wow, that was like a dead-on impression of how Greg Locke acts when he talks about his neighbor suing him. I gotta build my little kingdom. Only this, isn't this funny? This is, like, exactly what Greg Locke says and does over... You know, his neighbor suing him, for example. Only for the whole thing to burn up. I got to invest my life in something that God could make a bucket of bolts at the next stoplight in five seconds flat. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. He didn't say renounce your stuff. He said relocate your stuff. Send it on ahead so they'll have some building materials when you get there. I'm hoping some of y'all ain't in a lean-to. Because you get back then what you give out now. That's a Bible principle. As it is in heaven, so right now it should be done on this earth. Jesus is getting constant praise. People are constantly talking about Jesus in heaven right now. What a weird way to live, right? to be so obsessed with getting praise and love and adoration and worship 24-7 that you've set up a system where everybody that dies comes to you to worship and praise you for the rest of eternity. Self-centered much? And it's the last thing the church in America wants to talk about. Well, you know, if I talk about Jesus, you know, I might, I might lose my job. Maybe you got the wrong one. Nobody would lose their job for talking about Jesus. It's when you turn out to be a complete fucking extremist. That's when you lose your job. When you start attacking people for no reason. That's when you lose your job. Well, if I talk too much about Jesus, the, the actual church I go to would kick me out. You better run. Don't even go back. You, you got passed over. Don't even go back and make a statement. Just leave. If you can't talk about Jesus. 
So I accept. Like, nobody is being barred from talking about Jesus. What is he even talking about? A lot. I could preach a lot. I could rant a lot. But I think you, you, you get the idea behind what I'm trying to say, right? Not really. I told him at the conference, look, this is about the demonstration of the power of the Spirit of God. It's not about cute sermons no more. I can preach some cute sermons. Was it ever about preaching cute sermons? I got, I got some stuff I've been preaching for 30 years. I can get up here, woo, rah, rah, bish, kum, ba, three points of the poem, make it all rhyme. You'd be like, whoa, what a message. Who cares? Dude, <laughs> this is what I like to call virtue signaling, and it is the cringiest shit ever. Please stop virtue signaling, Greg. Who cares? There are people right now on TV preaching to millions of people that are much better communicators than me that are going to prison within the context of the next year. Okay, th he keeps saying this. He's said this like 15 times already. Just wait. Your favorite televangelist will be in prison before 2023. That's what he said. Before the end of the year. It, we're getting awfully close now. I would love to know how he justifies that. You know how he justifies it when he does a false prophecy like that? He pretends he never said it. It's not about cuteness. It's about realness. And I'm just being real with you. No. So I'm out of place in my life, almost 47. <laughs> oh, he's 47. I had no idea. Almost half a century. I will be crazy by the time I get to 50. He's already crazy. Really? I'm just at a place in my life where I'm like, you know what? I'm either going to believe the truth that I talk about from the pulpit, or I'm just going to talk about it from the pulpit and make everybody think I'm something that I'm not, which the Bible calls a hypocrite. It also calls me a lying coward. Because if I'll tell you one thing that I don't really believe, can I remind you in Revelation 21, 8, the first people to go to hell are the cowards. Our pulpits are full of cowards. There's more abuse in the pulpits of America than there is in the strip clubs of America. It's a fact. I know some of you. Okay, I don't know how he defines abuse exactly. He just said there's more abuse in the pulpits of America than in the strip clubs of America. What? <laughs> It makes your gag re reflex go off. That's all right. We're a deliverance church. We got 50 buckets around here. You can throw up anytime you want. I am so confused by all of this, but okay. Am I right? Come on up, baby. I'm just chit-chatting right now. Yeah, she can tell. I'm just looking for a spot to land, and I can't figure out. I'm, I'm circling the airport right now like, mm -hmm. I.e., this is the end. He invited his wife up because she, she usually does, like, the closing prayer or whatever. Every time she does her closing prayer, it is a very clear violation of the Bible because she babbles using many words to impress people. Uh, that's specifically condemned in the Bible. And, and she just goes on and on and on. It's just weird. Anyways, yeah, we're probably going to check out at that point when she comes in and starts doing her little prayer thing. But yeah, sounds like he's trying to find a place to quit now. <laughs> I'm just going to talk till I run plum out of gas. Pow, I have to crash it in the ground. <laughs> I'm just saying, he's coming, folks. We got to be ready. We ain't got time to mess around. And I think some of you, even, even with a demonstrative message like this, some of you need to really be baptized in the fear of the Lord this morning. What does he mean by that, demonstrative? That means it's possible to demonstrate. What does he mean when he says, even with a, a message that you can demonstrate? So what is he talking about here? I'm confused by his verbiage. And, and even before we start playing, start singing, start baptizing, she starts praying, I think some of you right now need to say, you know what, I want the will of God done in my house as it is in heaven. I want the will of God done in my life as it is in heaven. I want the will of God done with my family as it is in heaven. I, I want to say, hallowed be thy name. I want to walk in the healthy reverence and fear of the holiness of God. And I wonder right now if you just wouldn't start coming up all over the room.
I don't care if it's one, two, ten, or a hundred of you. Some of you right now need to just come and get on your face before God and say, Oh, hallowed be your name. I'm going to walk in holiness. I'm going to walk in righteousness. If you're here to be baptized, go ahead and make your way over. Now, if you're going to pray, you do that first. Then get over there to the little changing station. Get with Miss Billy and the crew. We'll get you a name tag. We'll get you a towel. My okay, so basically you need to get yourself delivered, quote unquote. Just strange stuff, dude. Sounds like that's basically the end of his sermon. Absolutely bizarre. Let me know what you thought about all of this in the comments or on Twitter at Telltale Atheist. I wonder if this dude is going to successfully sue Greg Locke and force him to relocate. That would be really fascinating to see.